So tonight from the Os et Brewery, it's Yorkshire Blonde. It's described as a fruity pale ale and 3.9%. And uh, I've just uploaded that page and it's not showing this uh, review. That's annoying. So yeah, 3.9%. It has got writing on the back. I will read the writing in a second. Um, so, let me quickly, that's it. Refresh that again. Good evening again. So on the back of this, oh, it's actually showing up now. I'll just click so I can see the comments because if I can see the comments, cheers. Good evening. Hello. So, oh, this is weird. I'm watching myself, watching myself. Oh God, that's freaky. Get that screen off. Oh God, that is weird. Good evening. So, let me pop out chat on. Here we go. It's actually good that you can see the uh, participants as well. Good evening. And here we are. So, good evening all. Here we go. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, hi there. Good evening. Bonjour. Oh, this is weird. So, two seconds. I do apologise. You know. Stupid pop out chat. That's it. I must have clicked on the wrong thing a minute ago. So, yeah, that's it. It's full green now. I can actually see it properly. Yeah. So, on the back, it says, let me put the light on it. Offset Brewery. More beers. Blimey neck. A progressive and passionate independent brewery located in the heart of Yorkshire. Born of family values, unity, teamwork and integrity. Crafted over two decades, we perfected the science of producing ales of consistently high quality and honed the art of brewing beers that are accessible to all. <laughs> uh, Sherlock Holmes, eh? <laughs> our best-selling beer pays homage to our stunning Yorkshire. Fair play to them. Heartland. The inspiration behind everything we brew. This lager-coloured ale is full-bodied, round, well-rounded and slightly sweet on the palate. A generous addition of Mount Hood hops late in the boil results in a delicate fruity aroma. John Holmes. That name rings a bell from somewhere. Proper beers up north, eh? Or well, north from me at least. It's so obviously Nottingham's lower, the one lower, lower than Yorkshire. So, new glass. In fact, my brother uh, lives in Retford, just outside Retford, uh, on the border. And he's actually got a Doncaster postcode, which is ever so strange. You live in Nottinghamshire and you've got a Doncaster postcode. So, lovely light um, golden pour, very light golden pours. Good evening. Um, good carbonation, lovely looking pint. Five mils of head. You know, you can't beat some mils of head. And uh, yeah, this one's been sat there a while, actually. So I ain't got a clue where I bought it from. I presume it might have been. Um, so Max Claridge's comment was held for review. Why Why would they hold a review? That all it says is that Man City are losing to Man United. Although it's good that teams get beat every now and again. Yeah, it looks a nice pint, doesn't it? It looks a nice starter beer, a nice sessionable beer. I'm getting a bready aroma with this. <laughs> Miles's comment's just been um, fingered as well. I'll put it on for show. <laughs> I suppose swearing's not allowed. I must remember that when I go on other people's chats. Uh, yeah, I got this one from Morrison's, right here. It is 3.9%. Yeah. Liverpool lost again. Wow, they're going through a, a bad spell, aren't they? It's going to happen, though. You know, everything went right for them last year, apart from your, your, um, the Champions League. And, you know... Sometimes stuff happens, doesn't it? You know, you can't win them all. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not daft. I won't going to drink two. I won't going to drink a, a week, a strong, and then another really strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't have the wife give me another moan that. Plus, I'm cooking dinner, and I've got to do a bit of plumbing work when I get back to the kitchen. Uh, I had a leak yesterday, and uh, it stopped leaking. Now it started blooming leaking again. So I just need to just tighten it up again, or I've got to strip it down, put um, PTFE tape on, and then redo it again. Bloody plumbing. Probably having dinner. It is Sunday night, isn't it? So, yeah. There's a hint of fruitiness there. This is firmly in the traditional beer camp. We were saying that on Dean's Beer Reviews that some beers have not travelled well in time. Um, he was saying about Hobgoblin. I never really drank Hobgoblin many, many years ago. Um, but yeah, some beers have definitely not stood the test of time. Bless you. Can't fault you there. See, I do Monday to Thursday at the moment, but I get Friday off, and I'd rather be off Friday. <laughs> it does. It's, it's a good starter beer. It's a beer before you get onto anything stronger that might wipe me out. And, uh, you know, ooh, working Saturdays, that's the killer, isn't it? That was the only thing about supermarket. 3.9% for this. Hey, no worries. Um, yeah, it was good. It was a good interview. Uh, interview. Review, rather. More of, a, more of a chat than hotels, to be fair. But it was nice to have it. Nice to do the live, the first collab review. And uh, it'll be interesting in, in the future to do more collab reviews. Yeah, I, I think, you know, yeah, so easy drinking. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's, it's a definite pub experience beer. You know, it's um, it's not trying to be anything different. It's a good traditional pub beer. There's a hint of fruitiness there. It was very bready on the aroma when I first... And, uh, yeah, the aroma's changed slightly now. Farmer's Blonde. What brewery? If it's this brewery, then no. First ever beer from Hossett Brewery that I've tried. Bradfield Brewery. Ah. I've tried uh, Wold Top. We had Wold Top in, our, in, in Sainsbury's and they've got some lovely beers. Stand, favourite standard beer lager? It's got to be Estrella. If you class Stella as Estrella, rather, as... Um, yeah, if you class Estrella as a standard, it's... Uh, I mean, really, Estrella is classed as a world lager. In Sainsbury's, anyway, so... Uh, if, if, you, if you're talking about stuff... Tenants is, you reckon Tenants is the best? Ooh, that's interesting. Now, I've got that bottle, that, that can that you sent me, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a look at that. In my hotel, where I, when I go on holiday, we use the same hotel because it's amazing, in Spain. Good evening. And uh, we've got a Strello on tap, and you've got plastic glasses, and you just go and help yourself. So I'm stood there, pouring it myself. I've had six six glasses before I walk away, you know, and go back to the seat and say to the wife, I had a right cue. Nine minutes with the blonde. Yeah, you need a bit longer with blondes, don't you? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a nice, traditional pale ale, really. Yeah, a fruity pale ale. But fruity in the sense... The Russian stout last night, was that? Str 
Starra Parman, yeah, brilliant beer. Remember it coming out in uh, Sainsbury's when it first came out in, in the supermarkets over here. Well, in Sainsbury's at least. I don't know if it was in the others. Um, but yeah, very good. Decent. There's, there's a lot of decent lagers, you know. Obviously, the real ale fans and the craft beer fans, a lot of them that don't haven't got a lager background, they'll they'll drink that and they'll think, oh, it's horrible. But also, of course, you know, all beer is good at the right time, at the right place, at the right temperature, obviously. Sat outside a pub after a day at work, someone pulls, someone comes up to you with a, with a pint of carling and you neck it and you're like, oh, God, that just hits the spot. And at the right time, every beer, every lager, cider, you know, at that particular moment, it ticks the boxes because it just makes it so refreshing. Good evening. I can't remember what that bottle was now then. Oh. Yeah. I'm no snob, never will be. I mean, I, I came from a lager background, drinking Heineken. Uh, I drank Mansfield Bitter. <laughs> I mean, let's be fair. If, if, some, if you're going to someone's barbecue, you forgot to take any of your own beers along and somebody offers you a Coors or a Carling or a Carlsberg, you'll just drink it, won't you? You know. And uh, yeah, it's not in your top 10. It never will be. But it will tick the boxes for that time when you're drinking it. Sam Smith's, I think I've only been able to get hold of one. Uh, drink Supermarket. They, you know, since COVID, since COVID, Drink Supermarket were, were a box ticking company to go to. All right. Is it in a bottle or is it one I brewed? Not that Imperial Russian stout, is it? Take no notice of what's on the bottle, if it's in a plastic bottle. Taddy Porter. Yeah, I love Heineken. Always have done. Mansfield smooth. <sighs> yeah. And this is another thing we were talking about in Dean's, where breweries getting brought out by the mega breweries, and then Hardy and Anson's got brought out by Green King. Hardy Anson's is gone um sadly and you know it's a shame you know i reckon sometimes l like if you was a footballer playing for nottingham forest you're earning your money and you don't want to leave because you're at the club you love and a lot of these breweries they're producing great beers they get took over by the mega mega companies and then what happens they close the brewery down all their beers go to the mega brewery and it's nowhere near as good afterwards but yeah, drink supermarket, they they used to be amazing. And now it's like they're selling every, they used to do a lot of single bottled stuff. You could do 120, 150 quids worth of stuff in a bottle, single bottles. Now you'd be lucky to get to 40 quid, 50 quid. Unless you buy the um, world's strongest beer and you, you're already at 40. Newcastle brand. Oh God, that's sacrilegious what they've done with that. So uh, there's quite there was quite a few Sam Smiths on Jink Supermarket. Yeah, you can't beat a Yorkshire blonde, can you? Oh, bless you. And uh, such there's such meaning in that as well. <laughs> I've seen about eight different Sam Smiths on beers of Europe. They do. There is quite a few out there, but it's getting them for the right price. And trying to, you know, crack the free shipping if you can. Because if you're spending so much, you want to get that free shipping. And to everyone joining the chat, low-cost beer are adding beers like. So, Tad, your comment, full-bodied blonde, has gone on uh, a thing where I've had to click on it to show it. Why would that be something that you can't post? Licking my lips, bless you. I mean, if you're going to brew decent beer, with what Miles has just said, 
if you're going to brew decent beers, then the quality's got to be bang on, hasn't it? You don't lose the quality. You keep Once you've discovered a beer that you love, keep the quality the same. Don't drop the bloody ABV. The shed is insulated, yeah. It's, it's triple insulated with foil. It's like an aluminium foil. Bubble wrap. And then I've got, um, obviously got the plasterboard walls. And uh, it's gone down to about two degrees in here, but it never gets below freezing, never. And obviously I come down to the shed, do beer reviews. So that kicks the heat in as well. Yeah, what Saddlers did to their their Christmas pudding stout was ridiculous. You turned one of the best beers in supermarkets at 6%. A, an amazing beer with flavour. And you drop it back to 4.5%. And it don't taste anywhere near the same. Still a nice beer in grand scheme of things, but not as good. And I agree with that, Lee Spencer. You know, it's um I, I just hope that the Brit the locals <laughs> my talk can keep shed warm, bless you. No. We did have, uh, quite a few years ago, before I plasterboard it and insulated it, we had a load of pot bottles down here. You know how you are for Christmas? You you buy cola or you buy pop and keep it in advance. Walk down to the shed one day and it was like a war zone in the shed, in the beer room. Um, there was exploding Coke bottles where they've, where they've exploded, splattered everywhere. Loads absolutely splattered. <laughs> Japanese whiskey, bless you. I've uh, got a f um, my server admin for my website. He's uh, from Sweden and he's actually a gardener, funnily enough, in the summer months. In the winter months, I don't think he works because it gets really bad over there, apparently. Um, but they he reviews whiskies. And uh, yeah, pricey, yeah, 50 quid a bottle. Oh, that is pricey. So, I like the fruitiness of this. He ain't got a channel. I need to ask him actually, does, it, does he do it on YouTube? I'll find out. Um, I've done the odd few. I'm hoping the old fellow's garden that I used to look after, um, he passed away sadly after Christmas. He had cancer and I, I didn't know. And a lovely bloke, 88 years old. And you know, in his last year and a half, I brought his garden back from the brink to a bang on garden. Um, and in his whiskey cabinet at home, apparently there's shed loads of whiskey, half open bottles. And I've already said to his daughter, don't chuck him away. Whiskey lasts forever. Well, you know, for such a time at least. And uh, she said to me, well, um, you might end up with a load of whiskey. And I'm thinking, brilliant. You know, I get to review it and, and drink it, obviously. But so, so, yeah, there might be a few whiskey reviews coming up soon. And uh, don't want to be chucking that stuff away. Plus, it's a nice way to raise a glass as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See, when you're in a pub, banter, a little bit of piss taking. Raff. There you go. So if you like whiskey reviews, Strong and Co's just reported. Try rampant lime reviews. Good evening. I love your accent. You've got this way, and uh, I was just, funnily enough, I was just talking about um, the Scottish fella. He was the first veterinary surgeon in Nottingham, an amazing, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Orangia boom. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing, but 88 years old, so knowledgeable. He, he did oil paintings, flipping brilliant bloke, you know, and it's a shame that I only got to be there for the last year and a half. 
of his life. But uh, all hail King Raggy. And uh, yeah, you know, and he used to watch the work I did and he got the enjoyment. And you know, sometimes in life, people get in that enjoyment. But his accent was brilliant. And that's why I watch your reviews because your accent's amazing. And you don't give a fuck. You just say it how it is. Uh, it's like looking in the mirror. A Scottish mirror of myself. But obviously I ain't got your beard. Ginger Joe's. Can't get, it really is hard to get hold of. Yeah. And it is nice. It is nice. Fuck off. <laughs> I'd look a cunt. <clears throat> Plus I wouldn't do it anyway. I like to be in the background. I do. That's, that's, that's what I am like. Yeah. Whatever I come across on the camera, I'm a bit like Dean Bear Reviews, I suppose. You know, a bit more reserved. I mean, like, once I've had a drink, I don't give a monkeys. Like most of us, you know, you've had a drink and you're like, yeah, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. So, a lovely, just nice blonde beer. It's, uh, hey, up. I've had the 15% clacks on. I've not plugged in my bloody charger. I'll plug it back in in a minute. For the next review. <laughs> no, you won't. No, don't do that. Take the piss out of me. I'll look right to that. Um, so, yeah. To end this review, before I go on the next review, a lovely golden, clear golden beer. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Me pissed? No. Uh, the first, good evening, Scott, as well. I missed a, you know, bloody hell, get some right royalty on the channel. Yeah, no, no, no. I had the first beer with Pete. Uh, Pete? Who's Pete? With Dean. That was my first beer. So this is the third beer of the day. And that's not a lie, you know. I'm not, uh, you know, because I knew I was drinking this fella afterwards. And uh, I know. It's going to be interesting when I go past some of the local breweries because obviously I've reviewed what you find at Robin Hood Beer Festival. Yeah, I might be after the next one. Although I can't be too pissed. I've got to go and fix a leak in the kitchen and cook dinner. You know, hey, not just the beer review. But um, $16.98. Oh. So Ranger Boom's next. 8.5%. That's why I've had two lower ABVs. <laughs> so, yeah. A lovely, lovely traditional golden beer. Uh, on sale at Morrison's. And like all beers, you know, all beers have got their place as long. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. As long, you know, as they've got taste. I mean, I got a bready aroma of this. But now the fruitiness has, has come through. So as it warms up, because obviously it's going to warm up being in the air rather than in the bottle. And uh, yeah, it's a nice, there's a hint of fruitiness there. Oh, I've been pissed. <laughs> Check out the funny reviews. You'll know for sure. Especially the, I think it was uh, Magic Rock Stout, Oatmeal Stout. I was steaming. Absolutely steaming. Yeah, Iranji Boom's 8.5. I've drank 67.5. Now that was some shit. That would be a great Scott and Wanda challenge or even a Bullman challenge. Brewmeister Snake Venom. Now there's, there's a video, you two, both of your channels. Brewmeister Snake Venom, the challenge. Could you imagine, actually, could you imagine a collab? Oh, bloody hell. Could you imagine a collab uh, beer review drinking that? So people around the country all drinking Brewmeister. All right. That's interesting. With all, with all the rules in the world, there's always a way around the rules. 
Yeah. I think it depends what you... That'd be an interesting mass review, wouldn't it? It's something to set up. Was it? It bloody hit me like, like a ton of bricks when I drank it. I thought it was higher. Um, with responding to what ramp rampant lines were saying, when trading standards, I read an article where trading standards um, did the snake venom and it actually came out 0.5% higher than what was on the bottle. But hey, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I actually cut some branches off a of birch the other day and the water that was coming out, bloody hell, absolutely dripping out. Loads of new beers tomorrow. So if you look at Bowman's Beer Reviews, he's actually done a beer haul. I haven't because they're not in my bloody same, uh, Tesco's. Bowman's Beer Reviews has actually done a beer haul video from Tesco's with six of the beers that are coming out tomorrow. So that's at Tesco's. Low cost beer. They've got a shed load of beers gone on tonight. And uh, if you trigger the 40 quid, you get the free delivery. And I'm, I'm not joking. If you check out the prices on there, put them against your normal prices that you would pay at a beer shop. Because, you know, you can't believe what anybody says until you see. Look at the prices and then you'll see. And then, you know, it might be interesting. So anyway, I need to kill this review to get on to the next. Sometimes you just have to neck it. Ooh. See, I'm a mass, I love Imperial Stouts. But I also love anything with butterscotch in, ginger. You know, I've just got this thing about ginger. And plum. I love plum porters for some strange reason. I absolutely love them. Next trip home, eh? Not long now, before it all starts to go back to normal and we can actually travel and go on holidays and all that other stuff. Ten pints of Rattler. Oh, bless you. 7.5% for three quid. Yeah, amazing beers. So yeah, Bullman's actually reviewed all of the six six of the new ones in Tesco's. So yeah, I've noticed that your reviews have got some good good views as well, which is good to see. You know, decent beer reviews need decent views. So you know, people calling each other's out. It's a, it's a good thing. Jobs are good and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, for me, a good traditional beer. Um, Readiness on the aroma. A plum dubel. Oh, bless you. That sounds nice. Um, yeah, did you get married the other day? Or was that, was that just something on the internet? For me, um, yeah, I would say around about a 3.9 out of 5. Um, it was an interesting beer. A good traditional beer. But interesting. And right, I'm going to kill this review. And back in two minutes for the next review. Thank you everyone for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. You know, it's lovely. Thank you. Cheers. I need to kill off the laptop as well. Two minutes.